Hi everyone, welcome back to another art haul video. Today we have three packages from Jackson's, one from Ken Bromley Art Supplies and a few more handmade paints just to add to my collection, just five more from two different sellers. So I've been saving all of these up over the past couple of weeks or so. Um, before anyone asks, no, I haven't won the lottery. <laughs> I've actually, for the Jackson's orders, been using my affiliate credit. So um, yeah, that's enabled me to buy these pieces that you'll see today, these products. And um, for the Ken Bromley's order, that's just a small order. I'll be showing you that in a minute. And yeah, with the handmade paints, I just ordered, as I said, five more colours from two different sellers. Both sellers I've bought from before and who were featured in my previous handmade watercolours video. Anyway, with that being said, let's get on to the opening. <laughs> oh my goodness, am I ever gonna get in? No, no, bits are coming off. Okay, so let's have a look in this box. This is not what's in the box. Well, I hope not because that wasn't what I ordered. I actually ordered one luminance pencil. See if we can get it out. And it is the French Grey 10%, which was one I didn't have. And I saw this on um, Melanie Chadwick's channel the other week. She was swatching some new luminance pencils that she'd bought. Um, Mel is my friend and I love her videos. Go and check out her channel. So I thought this was a gorgeous colour. I didn't understand why I didn't have it. So basically I bought one. So I'll be swatching that at the end. Any paints or pencils or whatever, um, we're going to swatch them all at the end. The dreaded, I don't know what you call these, like what's it? <laughs> So in here, just two tubes of paint, but I'm very excited because I have finally Kyanite and Perylene Violet from Schminker. So I'll be swatching those later as well. By the way, the Perylene Violet, I think was suggested to me by one of my viewers. So if that was you, thank you. I went to check it out, really liked the look of it and decided to buy it. Um, the Kyanite I swatched the other week in the Daniel Smith swatching video when I did the dot card set and I really completely fell in love with that one. Um, it just has a slight sparkle to it. It reminded me of like the night sky with the stars already in it. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing what I could do with that in my work. Um, pay no attention to the colour at the top here because it's nothing like that. So I think these are something that Jackson's have started doing recently and I thought I'd give them a go because the prices were really reasonable. Let me just have a look and see how much they were for you. Um, I've got the receipt beside me. So the 4 by 6 inch were £2.52, is that right? Yeah, apparently it is right. Okay, so the 4 by 6 inches were £2.52 each and this tiny one, um, 3 by 4 inches, was £1.98. But in there you get um, cold pressed watercolour paper, 15 sheets. It's tiny but it's perfect for little miniature paintings. Um, so yeah, I got that one as a cold pressed or not surface. This one is rough because I thought I'd see what the difference is texture wise between these two. So I got that in a slightly larger size. I really like working in four by six, by the way. I think it's a really nice size to work on. If you want to do something small, but not too small, because it's kind of postcard sized. Um, and this one is hot pressed. So it's basically the very smooth paper, which I'm probably going to be using for my pencil and mixed media work. I don't really like painting in watercolours on um, really smooth paper. I prefer the slightly textured paper. So this one I bought with 
pencil drawings in mind. And these two pads of paper are the Botanical Ultra Smooth Paper from St Cuthbert's Mill. I tried this, I had like a um, sample sheet of this. I think it was in, was it in that really huge art haul I did the other month? Um, but it was a really, really lovely paper and I love it for pencil work. I mean, you could, obviously, it's watercolour paper so you could paint on it. It's thick enough for that, but I'm probably predominantly going to be using it for pencil and mixed media. Um, so these, they weren't too expensive either actually. This one was £4.40 and this one was £7.80. And you get 10 sheets in each one. So it's A4 and A5 size. So here we have a slightly larger box. So I'm going to just zoom out a little bit there. And Now let's start with these because I'm very excited about these. Somebody told me about the golden um, paint chart that actually has proper hand painted, and indeed it does. You just peel that off. They put that in there to stop the paint from sticking to each other. Oh, I wonder why some of these have crosses through. Does this mean they're no longer in production or that Jackson's doesn't stop these? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> this is a hand painted chart of their acrylic colors. Ah, it's for golden heavy body fluid and open acrylic paints. Yeah, and some of them on the back across through. But this hand painted color chart cost 10 pence. That's all. So if you're looking to get some golden colors, please have a look at the hand-painted colour charts. Um, I couldn't believe it was only 10p because the other hand-painted colour charts they do for the other brands are all several pounds. Um, but yeah, somebody told me this and I went to check it out and I couldn't believe my luck because this is going to be so helpful to me in actually choosing the colours because obviously you get a much better idea. So I have, let me just pop that one that back in there like that so it doesn't stick together. Um, I have this one for the normal colours, if you want to call them that, and this one for the iridescent interference colours. Oh wow. Gosh, look at these. Wow, look at that. I didn't expect them to be so 3D. So for 20p I have a chart showing all of their colours and it's going to be so helpful to me because from a printed chart I mean it gives you some idea but it's not the same as actually seeing the paints in reality so yeah if you're interested in golden acrylics go and have a look at Jackson's color chart section and you should be able to find these for 10 pence each right let's open up again that's not what's in here <laughs> Oh yes, I know what these are. The Ink Tense pencils. Wow, they're really wedged in there. I think I'm gonna to have to rip that open. Now this was also inspired by Melanie's channel. Melanie Chadwick, go and check her out. <laughs> she um, uses Ink Tense in her work quite a lot and I was quite interested in them. And she did a swatching video on these the other day. So if you're interested in seeing some of these, in action. Um, you can go and watch her channel. She has one of her recent videos all about ink tents pencils and so yeah I will swatch these for you also in this video and we'll have a look at how the different colours look when they're dry and when I've added water to them as well. So I got deep violet, mallard green, and Payne's Grey. There are a couple of other colours I wanted but they were out of stock so I've added them to my wish list and if I really like these ones I'm going to get some more at a later date but I tried to pick the ones that were really light fast because obviously I do a lot of work that I sell, I sell the originals so I need them to be light fast 
and some of the ink tents colours weren't but these ones were. So in this package here we should have some Jackson's acrylic paint yep in olive green which is rather a nice colour. I'm kind of doing some more slightly spring-like landscapes at the moment and um, yeah I thought I would try some of their olive green. I did get a studio acrylic colour in Payne's Grey the other week as well. I only have a few of their um, own brand paints but I am really liking their products so yeah I decided to get that. By the way I'm going to be doing a separate video at some point on my collection of golden acrylic paints. I don't own a huge number but I do have quite a few now and I think in the other box that we have here today there are some um, I think there should be three more so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch those for you in a separate video all about golden paints because I've been asked about this by several people now and so I know that's something that quite a few of you would like to see so we'll be doing that separately um, but in here we have in this one ah yes I, I got a Mars brown artist acrylic colour. I really love these tubes. Very nice kind of classic design. Um, so that's the Jackson's brand again and I got an aqua green Windsor and Newton colour. I saw this one actually on the colour chart while I was looking at Windsor and Newton paints and I don't know of anyone who has used it. I haven't seen it swatched but I read the reviews and people seem to absolutely love this colour. So I thought um, it's right up my street because it's a bluish green or a greenish blue. And um, so yeah, I'll be swatching that a bit later so we can have a look and see what that looks like. And finally, in this box, we have another block of Jackson's paper. This one is actually for acrylic paints. I don't usually paint in acrylic on paper but I thought it'd be interesting to give this a go. So for how much was it? For £2.70 for 15 sheets, that seemed like a good deal and I thought it'd be fun to perhaps swatch on that and also try to create some artwork on it too. It'd be quite different to painting on canvas or wood, but yeah, I look forward to trying that out. We're going to mix it up a little bit and I'm gonna show you the five handmade watercolors I bought. These two are from Nectar Watercolors. Um, you will have seen her other paints in my handmade watercolours video and these three are from Beyond Indigo, you will also have seen hers. So this is how they look when they're all wrapped up. These are actually full pans this time. So I love the putty colour so much and I have a full pan of putty. Um, Aurora Violet, this is a new one for me, my full pan of putty. It may go in my main watercolour palette because I have a smaller half pan in the handmade watercolour palette. Um, so yeah, this one's probably going to go in with my bigger brand watercolours. have Aurora Violet, which is definitely going to go in the handmade pan. And this one is Lavender Mist. So I'll be swatching these for you later on in this video, but let's just open them up and have a look at them. Alice popped a note in with these ones saying, can we talk about how good these three look together? And they really do. I can't wait to swatch those and just see what they actually look like. But in the pans, they do look like a great trio. These little half pans from Nectar Watercolours have ultramarine teal and treacle. Both of these colours, I think they look really nice together by the way, but both of these I don't think I remember seeing in her shop before, certainly not this one, unless I somehow missed them. But when I saw that, it's just so much my kind of blue. And I really love this earthy brown. I love blues and browns together. So I'll be swatching those as well for you in a bit. I have to say they smell amazing. I could smell the clove oil as soon as I opened them. I think we'll open. This one from Ken Bromley, I've had to turn it upside down because the address on the front was so massive that I couldn't cover it up. So I'm going to open this and yeah, we'll have a little look at what's inside. I think you'll be quite surprised by what's inside here. I don't think I've ever ordered anything quite like this before. 
Now I discovered these because Ken Bromley, I'm signed up to their mailing list and they told me that they have these in stock but I believe you can also get them from Jackson's for around the same price. <laughs> you can see them in here. Wow, I love that colour. That is the colour of my car. I have a Fiat 500, pretty much exactly that colour. What's that? Oh yes, I remember ordering these. <laughs> I've had this package for a good couple of weeks now. I've forgotten that I ordered these um, extra blades for my bullet brass pencil sharpener that I got from Choosing Keeping. Well, they should be, yeah. So do you know what these are? Or are you wondering what they are? Because they do look a little bit strange. This looks like some kind of tickling stick. I could chase Dominic around the house with that later. <laughs> but um, it's a very flexible little, like, a. Uh, silicone tip and you use them with acrylic paints and they create texture and pattern and I tend to use let me just show you what I use I had to go and get this from the art cart but this is what I use for adding um, like lines in fields when I'm doing acrylic painting if I want it really textured um, this is actually <laughs> A hair comb and I've had this for years and I don't know where I got the idea that I would use one of these for making my textures it works really well but it's not very flexible and it is quite large so I thought when I saw these I could um, probably kind of upgrade my hair comb I might still be using that because I have had this for probably I would say about at least 15 years probably longer <laughs> but these um these are quite easy to control because they feel really ergonomic actually really nice to grip you can see they look like that if i hold them on their side you can see they've got a slightly wider part here where you grip it and they have different serrated edges so you get different effects so yeah, I decided to get some and um, I will be experimenting with those with my acrylic painting when I'm doing my landscapes and I'll let you know how I get on with them. Okay, so this one is a large one. Um, I think what I will do is unpack it and then I'll show you the items because this box is a little bit large for the desk. So I'll just open this and then I'll be back. something quite unusual from Jackson's. This is a circular plywood panel for painting on. Um, you can use oil or acrylics on this. Looks like that, it's very deep. Um, as you can see, the plywood is attached to this kind of support. If I flip it over, you can see it looks like that. And I thought, how brilliant it would be to paint a moon on this piece of wood. It's really quite heavy and um, feels really nice quality. So that will be a nice little experiment. I think I'm going to paint a moon. I'm not 100% sure. I might change my mind and just decide to do a landscape on here, which would be quite unusual, seeing as it's round, but it could work. I'm not sure. Anyway, I thought I'd get one just to try them out because I haven't ever tried them before. I've tried um, the square panels. I've never painted on a round one. So that would be really interesting to see how that goes. And yeah, I do think that could make a really nice moon, but we'll see. So we'll start with this little thing. And this is a foldable water pot. I saw that Faber-Castell did these and I thought this will also be a nice, um, little travel pot to take with me when I perhaps go back to Suffolk or if I want to paint outside. So let's just see how this works. I think you just push it out like that. Yeah, it's basically kind of rubberized. And there you go, you have a little portable water pot and you can rest your brushes on the top there that's quite handy. So yeah, that will probably be coming with me when I go back to Suffolk and on any little outdoor painting excursions. So in here, 
unsurprisingly, <laughs> there should be some more golden colours. So as I said, these will be featured in another video where I swatch all of my golden acrylic paints for you. So you can have a good look at how the colours actually look. So this time I went with Naples Yellow because that's a good staple kind of colour to have. Ultramarine Violet, I couldn't resist that. That's such an amazing colour. And Red Oxide, which is going to be good for my kind of landscapes. So yeah, three more to add to my golden collection. And finally, the last few bits and pieces. We should have a few little things in here. Really, really nice colours. Wow, look at those. Oh, I like that. Ah, a little note from Jackson's saying that they're packaging peanuts, that's what they're called, are 100% compostable. Okay, so the last few things. I finally, finally managed to get my hands on um, the soft white Holbein Artists coloured pencil. One of my viewers recommended this to me months ago and said that this is the best white pencil they have come across. It's the most opaque, I believe. It actually says here, use knife to sharpen. So I can't put that one in the pencil sharpener, but um, I guess because it's so soft. But yeah, it finally came back into stock. It was out of stock for months and I managed to get one. One of my viewers also recommended this one to me. Now it says salmon on it, but it actually was called Dark Flesh. I think they've renamed it. And she said it was the kind of color of the anthraquinoid pink pencil that I love from um, Luminance. It does look an absolutely beautiful color. We'll give that a swatch in a bit. This one was also recommended to me by a subscriber. This Holbein Artists pencil in Celadon. That looks like a really beautiful green. I'm loving the way these colors look together. So thank you to the three people who suggested these three pencils to me. And this one is Jean Brilliant, Jean Brillant. <laughs> my French is so good. Um, yeah, I just really like this colour in their acrylic gouache. So I thought I would get the pencil version as well. And finally, the last little thing we have here is a little glass dropper bottle. The reason I have this is because I thought it would be great for activating my handmade watercolour paints. Just add a little drop of water really easily. I have been doing it with a brush. It's a bit messy bringing the water over, so I thought with this, I can just drop it on. And um, yeah, that wasn't very much. That was like, I don't know, two pounds or something. Um, so yeah, I thought that would come in handy. So let's do some swatching. For the swatching, I thought it would be fun if we tried out these little watercolour blocks as well. So I'm going to attempt to get into these. Um, oh dear, I'm gonna be defeated by packaging again. <laughs> I can't get in. I need my little knife that's over here. I don't think these really need to be in plastic, to be honest. But we have this little one, which is the cold pressed. I don't know whether you can see on there, but, um, oh, it really is, an, it's in a proper block. It's um, gummed on all of the, or glued rather, on all of the edges. Ooh, tricky. Okay. Um, anyway, yes, that's what that looks like. So it's got a lightly textured surface. That's the um, cold press knot surface. And then this one should have a slightly rougher surface. Oh, and it's easier to get into as well because it just opens like that can see that that's very slightly more textured but it's not super rough which is quite nice um, let's have a go at swatching on this one first I'm gonna do the handmade watercolors these will be swatched in my handmade watercolor sketchbook where I'm storing all of the swatches as well but for the sake of this video we're just gonna try them on this so this one is called Putty. I'll just hold that up. A bit difficult when it's not in the palette being held. Steady. I love this colour so much. 
It reminds me a little bit of um, if any of you saw my Good Honey watercolours handmade watercolour paints video the other day. She has a colour called Baked Kiss and it reminds me a little bit of that. They're kind of similar. Beautiful colours. I think this one might be a little bit darker. Right, next one I'm going to swatch. I think we'll choose Lavender Mist. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, they do look good together, don't they? Alice was right. Really gorgeous. And the last one is Aurora Violet, I think it was called. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, that's so vibrant. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow, they do look nice together. Stunning paints. I do love Beyond Indigo's paints. They're really, really stunning colours. Alice also includes these little information cards about each colour. Because I've had putty before, she didn't include the putty one again. But yeah, it tells you which pigments they're made from and how she decided upon the colours and so on. So a little bit of history of the colour, which I think is a really nice touch. I love to know that kind of thing. Okay, so they look really gorgeous and they do work really well together. Okay, let's try these ones. By the way, this paper is really nice to paint on. So this is the Nectar Watercolours um, Ultramarine Teal. So it's like a very interesting colour. Oh yeah, beautiful. Slightly greenish blue. Very dark and moody. Yeah, that's a real Natasha colour, that one, isn't it? That is a stunning colour. Perfect stormy sky colour. And then we have this one called Treacle. Can't have too many reddish browns, I think. Oh, I've got a little bit of the, sorry, a little bit of the ultramarine teal in that one. I didn't clean my brush well enough. Let's try again. This one is not such a strong colour. It's not, it's surprising. It hasn't got such a high, kind of, they call it like a tinting strength or something. I actually don't know all of the technical terms for watercolour. Ah, there we go. Beautiful colour, they work really well together. So I'll hold those a bit closer so you can have a good look. Stunning. Really nice paper to work on as well. I love um, textured paper because you get all of this interesting stuff going on when you apply the watercolour paint, which I find doesn't happen on the hot pressed paper. Let's try this paper for, we have one Daniel Smith, one Schmincke Horridam, and one Windsor & Newton Professional. So let's try the Kyanite. So let's give this a good mix. I already know I love this colour. I'm trying it out the other week with the Daniel Smith dot card set. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Such a beautiful dark midnight blue with some very slight sparkle to it. Really stunning. Oh, it's interesting. Look what's happening to this one. This one. I don't know if you can tell on here, but it's actually drying up quite a bit lighter there. It's a very interesting colour, the way it separates a bit. Beautiful. 
love this so much. I really love Kyanite Genuine from the moment I tried it. There's been a little bit of controversy, or is it controversy, <laughs> about Daniel Smith um, Primatech paints this week. I think they're called World Pigment Day on Instagram. Go to their account and see what they've been saying about the Daniel Smith um, Primatech line. I'm not going to say anything in this video, we might talk about it in another video, but just if you're interested in what they have to say about them, go and have a look at their Instagram page, um, starting with the post from yesterday, which as I record this would be the 20th of April, I think. It was when they looked into the Amazonite paint, so have a look at that. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Come back and leave a comment. Um, anyway, right, let's try the Windsor and Newton. Whoa, this really is coming out aqua green. They're really under pressure, these tubes sometimes. <laughs> okay, so this is a series three color. Oh my goodness, I can see why this had good reviews. <laughs> Look at the vibrancy. Oh my word, it goes on beautifully. The vibrancy of that paint, the most gorgeous, um, well, teal, I suppose, called aqua green, but looks to me quite turquoise, tealish, much brighter. I can already see in person than it is on camera. So has to be seen in person to be appreciated that one, I think. Okay, so let's try finally the Perylene Violet by Schmincke. I feel like these colours don't come out as well on camera as what I'm seeing as I sit in front of them. Wow, a stunning colour. That is like, it's like a really rich red wine kind of colour. They actually look really nice, don't they? <laughs> the three of those, none of these were meant to make any kind of palettes, but the three of those look stunning together. So we have Daniel Smith, Winsor Newton and Schmincke. All feel lovely to work with. Really, really nice. I'm liking this paper as well, by the way. It's taking the watercolour very well. Right, for the pencils, I think I'm going to use this. This is the hot pressed paper. Feels lovely and smooth. So let's try the salmon from Polychromos. Oh wow, this paper does feel great for pencils. Yeah, this is kind of similar to the anthraquinoid pink. Feels lovely, they feel really nice on this paper. That does remind me a lot of the Luminance Anthraquinoid Pink, which is a pencil I love. So this one will probably be getting a lot of use as well. Okay, let's try the Holbein Artists Celadon. Oh yeah, that's a nice green. The um, Holbein Artist pencils remind me very much of the Polychromos actually. They're very similar pencils. The Luminance feel quite different. So let's try the um, Jaune Brillant or Jaune Brilliant. Um, it doesn't have an I in it there, so I'm assuming it's Brillant. That feels lovely too. It's really nice, creamy feeling pencils, especially on this paper. Yeah, that's beautiful color for possibly coastal pieces or autumn landscapes. Very nice, all very pretty colours. So this is the one that Mel had that I like the look of, the Luminance French Grey 10%. Let's just give that a bit of a swatch here already. Like the Luminance are kind of more, I don't want to say chalky, it's not chalky, it's sort of just like a textured kind of feeling. They feel wonderful, I love working with Luminance. I really like this because it's a very soft stone kind of colour, a really warm grey. So this one I'm not going to swatch today. It needs to be sharpened and it says to use a knife and I need to get my knife. Um, I haven't sharpened a pencil with a knife for so long. 
Um, so when I use this in smart work, I will show you how it performs and whether it actually looks more opaque because I'm really looking for a white that will layer really well over other colors. So I'll have to get back to you on that one. So I'll let you know in a future video. Um, we are going to test the Derwent ink tents. So I think first what I will do is start with the Payne's Gray. I'm just going to swatch it like this. So we'll do one dry swatch. Wow, they feel really nice too. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera, by the way. Yeah, that feels good. That's a bit like drawing with a luminance, I would say. To see how it looks when it's wet, we'll just do that. And then we will add some water. I'm just gonna wash my brush really thoroughly and see how this looks and activates when you add water. Wow! Look at that colour. Gosh, isn't it interesting how different it looks in its dry form to when you add some water so this is the Payne's Grey. That looks really indigo, actually, when you add the water. That's beautiful. You know how much I love a dark and moody blue. <laughs> a bluish grey, it's one of my favorite things. That is stunning. So apparently these are permanent, I think Mel said, when um, this has dried, you can work over the top of it and I don't believe it can be re-wet. I think that's what she said, but don't quote me on that. Um, but yes, they're great for working over the top of once the, um, once the ink has dried. I guess we're calling it ink if it's called ink tents. Um, which ones shall I try? Let's try actually, let's do the deep violet next and have a look at that. Okay, we had a technical issue there and I had to start filming again. <laughs> so I was saying how beautiful this colour looked and it reminded me a bit of the Derwent Light Fast. I think it was Nightshade. Okay, let's wet this and see what this looks like. Wow, it's so vibrant. Reminds me of that watercolour I just swatched. Look at the vibrancy of these colours. Wow, Derwent, I am impressed. I'm going to bring that closer, see whether you can see how vibrant that actually is. So the final one we have to swatch today is Mallard Green. Let's swatch that here. Oh, this is lovely. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Even dry, this one's quite vibrant. It's so fun wetting these because I don't know how they're going to turn out. Oh wow, it's really transparent and kind of aqua. Reminds me, it's like the colour of um, the sea when I went to Cornwall. <laughs> Sorry, that one splattered a little bit, but can see there. These are really nice. I can see why Mel likes them. I mean, I've only tried three, but I like what I see so far. So there we go. That concludes the swatching in this particular art haul. I think this may be the last art haul for a little while because, I mean, other than buying maybe a few little bits and pieces when I get a bit more affiliate credit, I think that I'm probably going to slow down on the new materials now. I've bought loads of new stuff just recently and I was lucky enough to be able to buy a whole lot more with the affiliate credit, um, which has been really lovely. So thank you if you're using the link underneath the videos to Jackson's because it's helping me to be able to try all these lovely art materials and share them with you. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think to the different um, art materials I've shown you today. Is there anything that you think you might buy? I always love to hear whether you're going to buy anything that I have shared with you. 
Um, but yeah, take care of yourselves and stay creative and I will see you soon in another video.